Imagine waking up to a world where China has just cut off all mineral exports to the United States. No rare earths, no lithium, no graphite, no nickel. Overnight, the U.S. finds itself on the brink of a technological and military crisis. What happens next? And can America survive without China's minerals? The first wave of impact would be immediate and severe. High-tech industries would scramble to secure supplies. Semiconductor manufacturers, the backbone of America's digital economy, would face production delays as essential rare earth elements vanish from supply chains. Companies like Apple, Intel, and Tesla, all reliant on China's minerals for batteries, chips, and high-performance components, would be forced to ration materials or halt production entirely. The electric vehicle industry would be among the hardest hit. Lithium-ion batteries, the core of EVs, depend on materials dominated by China's supply chain. Without access to lithium and graphite, production would plummet. Prices of EVs would skyrocket, making electric cars far less affordable. The push for clean energy would stall as wind turbines and solar panels, both reliant on rare earth elements, suddenly become far more expensive to produce. But the consequences extend beyond civilian industries. The U.S. military relies heavily on Chinese-mined and processed rare earths for fighter jets, missile guidance systems, and advanced radar technology. Without these minerals, national defense operations could grind to a halt. The Pentagon has long warned about over-reliance on China, but an immediate cutoff would leave weapons programs struggling to source alternatives. The security implications are dire. Losing access to these materials would weaken America's ability to maintain its technological edge on the battlefield. In response, the U.S. would have no choice but to activate emergency measures. Strategic mineral stockpiles built for such crises would be tapped, but these reserves are limited and wouldn't sustain long-term needs. The government would accelerate domestic mining operations, pushing to develop rare earth processing facilities that have been delayed for decades. Places like Mountain Pass, California, one of the few U.S. rare earth mines would see a surge in activity. However, refining these materials is a process still largely controlled by China. The challenge isn't just mining, it's processing, and that's where America is most vulnerable. The U.S. would also turn to its allies. Australia, a major lithium and rare earth supplier, would become a critical partner. Canada, rich in nickel and cobalt, would ramp up exports. South American nations like Chile and Argentina, home to massive lithium reserves, would see a spike in demand. Indonesia and the Philippines, key players in nickel production, would suddenly find themselves at the center of global geopolitics. But shifting supply chains isn't instant. Developing new mining and processing infrastructure takes years, sometimes decades. Even with full-scale efforts, shortages would persist, industries would struggle, and the economic toll would be massive. Meanwhile, China wouldn't be immune to the fallout. The U.S. remains one of the largest consumers of high-tech products. A minerals export ban would also disrupt global markets, affecting Chinese businesses that rely on American semiconductor technology. But China's strategy wouldn't just be about economic pain. It would be a power move, a demonstration of how deeply the world relies on its resources. For decades, the U.S. has prioritized short-term profits over long-term security. A Chinese minerals ban would expose the fragility of that decision. It would be a wake-up call. America would either invest heavily in self-sufficiency or face prolonged economic and strategic vulnerability. The question isn't whether this could happen. It's what happens when it does. The world's reliance on Chinese minerals is a ticking time bomb. And the U.S. must decide, adapt now or risk being left behind.